everyone, this is Brent Pena, and I'm here today to talk about just about anything. One of the things that bothers me about the Bible is all the murder and killing and rape, destruction, death, and war. I understand the idea of different cultures and tribes and human race killing each other and all that. What I can't deal with is the fact that there's a God, according to the Bible, an omnipotent, omnipresent, all-loving, all-merciful God who is commanding and demanding the death and genocide of so many human beings. An example would be the book of Numbers, chapter 31, verse 17 through 18, Isaiah chapter 13, verse 15 through 18, Hosea chapter 15, verse 16. I just for the life of me can't understand how anybody can claim that the God of the Bible is anything but evil and horrid by definition. If you were to look in the dictionary at the word evil, you would discover that it goes exactly with the description of what this God does in the Bible. Evil, some of the details of the definition is bad omens, destructive force, followed by a reputation of anger and jealousy. Well, even the Bible admits that God is a jealous, angry God, and he brings wrath and vengeance. Revenge. This God feels like he needs to do vengeance on people, and mostly he does it on poor, innocent, pregnant women and children, which I, for the life of me, cannot understand. Now, you hear Christians all the time say, well, you got to understand that was a different culture and a different time, but in the same breath, they'll tell you that Jesus is God. So we got a Jesus character who says, do unto others as you want done unto you, treat others right, faith without works is dead, and, you know, have love and tenderness and, you know, kiss your fucking friends on the forehead bullshit and give everybody an old woman cookies and milk. Isn't this the same guy who's supposed to return on a magic carpet or a fucking flying jet-propelled unicorn and blow up the planet? God so loved the world that he killed himself so he could just come back and blow the world up for the second, or what is it, the third time now? Does this God even keep track? It's just ridiculous to me. Look, if you want to sit there and say that there's a God, fine. If you want to believe in a fucking Easter Bunny, cool. I'm cool with that. I'm down with the fucking Easter Bunny. But what you can't do is take the word merciful, love, and kind, and generous, and rich in thought, and fucking attribute it to your God. Because it just ain't the deal. Your Bible might say that God is love, but it must be talking about the kind of love where you get fucked in one night, don't even get the person's name, and they take off leaving you hanging. Because that's the kind of fucking love your Bible's got. There's no love in there towards the kind where you're compassionate and you, you know, you hold people and say, look, everything's going to be okay. I know life fucking sucks, but I'm here for you. You may be able to cherry pick and find little verses here and there where it sounds nice and cute and makes everybody feel fucking all warm and fuzzy inside. But I can show you 90% of the Bible where it talks about murder, rape, destruction, and death, the fucking greed of humanity demanded by God. And yes, throughout the Bible, God commands all these things. I've given you verses. Listen, don't take my word for it. The Bible speaks for itself. Read the fucking book, quit listening to your preacher and all these idiots out there who are telling you that this is what to believe in, this is how you should believe, this is how to get on your fucking knees and pray and, you know, suck off the missionary, whatever. Just read the fucking book and you'll realize what every atheist, agnostic and pagan and skeptic out there who's got critical thinking involved, you'll realize why it is there's so many people out there that fucking think the book is pure toilet paper. I'm just trying to help you. I'm trying to be a friend. So if you got any sense at all, and you actually care about yourself, respect yourself, respect your family and your friends, just read the fucking book. Find out what you are committing your existence to. Is that so hard? I mean, it is supposed to be the Word of God. You should take the time to read it. Okay, enough. I've been too mean. Okay, be cool.
Hello everyone, my name is Brett Keen, and we're going to talk about sex, you and me baby. Well, I don't know if it's going to be me and you, but it's going to be somebody for sure. One of the interesting things about sex is religion for a long time has tried to make it taboo. Anything that humans seem to do naturally is considered sin and evil. But us atheists, we don't have a Bible, we don't have any kind of manual that tells us how to do it. We don't even have a book that tells us that missionary style is the right way to go. We kind of just go with it, you know. The woman says, hey, she wants a 69 or she wants to do doggy style or whatever the hell kind of cool pet name they have for a position that day, we just do it. The sound of hot rods in the background. You notice that hot rods really get women hot? They don't know shit about a vehicle, they don't know nothing about what's under the hood. Well, at least some of them don't. I can't say that about all. Generalizations are bad. But as you can hear, we've got a hot rod in the background just tearing it up, rocking and rolling and shit, and I just figured we'd sit here and talk about some stuff. It sucks everything, though, is it? It sucks the way to go. Well, according to religion, it's funny because one minute tells you to bear fruit and multiply, and then the next minute it tells you that, hey, sex is bad, lusting is bad. How can a Christian man ever hook up with a Christian woman if he's not able to lust or have some kind of temptation? It's a part of the deal. One of the first things that happen to us whenever we meet a person that we like whether it's a guy or it's a woman of the same sex, we are going to look at the appearances and we're going to go, oh my goodness. That's just the way it is. That is just the way it is. So how could a Christian man, let's say a Christian man takes a Christian woman out to a movie theater or something, and he goes, honey, this was really nice. Jesus was very happy and I think he approved of this relationship. Now let's go home and have sex. Yeah, right. There's got to be lust involved. And I've always wondered, how do religious people handle that? Do they handle it the same way as atheists and agnostics and deists? Do they sit there and just say, Hey, I'm in the mood to fuck. Let's rock and roll, son. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do they do it like that, or how do they handle it? Because I really don't know. Do they pull up crucifixes, light candles, pour holy water on the door frame? smear some goat's blood in the wall and shit before they do it. How does this work? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. I got it. I got a way out for the Christians so they can get right down to business and not have to fuck around with rituals and shit. Here's what you do. You backslide for about 10 minutes, get your groove on, and then you pray about it and say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I couldn't help it. I had to get my feet wet. And then voila! You fucking got it. Amen. Ask for forgiveness. Repent. Get anointed for your sins. And you'll be fine. Grace is a wonderful thing.